Hey, I'm Randy and I'm the Cheap Audio Man. Here at the Cheap Audio Man, we don't feel like some IEMs should cost more than a steak dinner for two uh, or uh, for 12. That's a pretty expensive steak dinner. And these don't. We're talking about the KZ. Okay, this is a gr the great model number here. KZ ZS10 Pro. <laughs> KZ ZS10 Pro. And then this one's a little bit easier. The Sennheiser IE300. Okay. Both earbuds. IEMs as some fancy people like to call them. All right, so sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about a tale of two earbuds. Today's sponsor is, uh, is from uh, Flash Gordon Comic Books. Number 36, Flash Gordon. Uh, looks like he gets caught up with a giant spider. All right. Yeah. Antique comic books. It's a great sound investment for your future. Okay. Flash Gordon. I've got a whole stack of these. I'm giving them away. So just send me a message. All right. KZ. Let me see if I can remember. KZ ZS10 Pro. I got it right. All right. KZ ZS10 Pro. $50. All right. Sennheiser IE300. $300. It's kind of a kind of a fun little model number there. That's that's MSRP. I don't know if that's uh, what they're going for now. I'll link everything in the description. Okay. So we have the Sennheisers, which are six times more expensive than the KZ ZS10 Pro. All right. How are they built? Well, here's it very simple. The Sennheisers are built very well. The KZs are built okay. Um, their stock cable on the KZ ZS10, pretty bad. It's a two pin connector. Um, it's not that the cable is bad per se, it's that it's so skinny and has a tendency to get tangled. It has a tendency to frustrate me a great deal, okay? But the good news is you can get a aftermarket cable or different cable so that it doesn't frustrate you as much, okay? I've actually got, I think this one. Sorry. Taking a long time. All right, I've got this one. Now this specifically is a balanced cable. Um, it's a lot better. The point is there's aftermarket cables available. Um, that won't get as tangled up. There's a long way to go to say you can get a different cable. Sorry about that. The connection here is the, it's a two pin. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but I'm gonna try it. It's a two pin type of connection. So you can't spin this one around like the Sennheiser's MMCX. You can just spin this around. These, uh, you can do that once um, and then you'll never be able to do it again. Don't spin it around, all right? So they have the two pin connector, all right? Sennheiser, as I just mentioned, has the MMCX uh, connector which is kind of the pop-in circular connector. Most people that have seen IEMs uh, have seen it before. Here, let's see, maybe if it, that'll work. Um, and then the side of it kind of looks like that. And you just pop it in, all right? Now with the Sennheiser, the cable, the stock cable has a bit of a, okay. Let me, let me back up. The stock earbud has a bit of a recess in it. So the cable has to kind of reach down and extend down. What does that mean? It means I wasn't able to get any aftermarket cables on here because I wanted to try these balanced, but none of my balanced MMCX cables worked. Is that a deal breaker? No. The KZ ZS10 not built great okay they have kind of a a metal metallic and i don't even know if it's real metal it seems like chrome plastic 
I'll tell you this much. When I pulled them out of the box, I'm like, Ugh. they look good. I don't feel good. Maybe it's mental. I don't know. All right. Sennheiser takes a different approach to this. Sennheisers, um, they're, they feel good. They're, they're like rubberized plastic all over. Okay. They feel tough. Like they don't feel like they're going to break. And these aren't trying to be like all pretty like. They're just like, hey, here's some IEMs. Uh, if you don't like it, you're going to deal with it. And I kind of like that. There is kind of a speckled pattern to the to the coating on there. It's not paint. It's just coating. However, it was like molded or what have you. Uh, it's got a little bit of speckle in there. The cord, uh, rubberized, very tough, very tough, thick right here at the ear. So it's going to form to your ear. The cord is going to be pretty subjective. Uh, I don't think anybody can argue how well it's built though. Um, some people may not just, just may not like how it's built with the rubber and stuff like that. Um, as far as the quality, it's fantastic. Okay. Um, it might not be everybody's cup of tea. Sometimes when people are paying $300 for a set of IEMs, they want them to look like ear jewelry, giant ear jewelry that people stick in their ear instead of hanging from their ear. I've never really understood that. I don't, it doesn't bother me. All right. Now the Sennheisers come with a really nice case that actually extends and lifts up. And that makes me, allows me to put the ear studio M100 Mark II inside it. The one thing that I was impressed about the Sennheiser is their earbuds, ear tips, okay? They come with two different foam ones and then a whole bunch of silicone ones. And that comes with one of these little, I call it an ear spear. It gets your ear yuck out of your earbuds, okay? But the way the, I'm gonna see if I can show this on camera. The little, not that one. All right. The way these are designed is, let me see if I can stick it on the end of here. They actually have, like most will just have a hole in it. This is gross. All right. I think we're good. Most of them will just have a hole in it, but this one has almost kind of like a little tiny mesh and they have it on the foam and the silicones too. And the cool thing is when you pop that off, again, it has the little mesh in there again. So you have like two layers of um, protection from getting your internal ear gunk into, into the IEMs, all right? So overall, I'm I'm very impressed with the the build quality of the Sennheisers. Um, is that going to matter to you, or like aesthetics wise, is that going to be something that's a big deal for you? It could be. Um, and if you don't like it, you don't like it. I get it. But in the long run, I think these are pretty tough. I think they're going to make it through a lot of. Uh, I'm not saying like damage or stuff like that, but they're going to hold up pretty good. These. You might want to get yourself a little case to put these into because one wrong move and I don't know. All right. Let's talk about how they sound. The KZZS10. So can't. Pro. I didn't get it right. The KZZS10 Pro are, I would say, detail centric. Um, they sound pretty similar to the 10 P ones, which is a planar magnetic, pretty power hungry. I have to run them balanced to get the most out of them. These are not power hungry, maintain a lot of the same detail while not feeling like they're on the top. So ton of detail, ton of trouble, not fatiguing, decent bass, decent mids, um, actually the bass isn't decent. De uh, bass is pretty good. Uh, decent mids. The treble is the 
story here and the overall sound signature is the story here and the clarity is the story here. $50 is the story here. Okay. This is an awful uh, clear, awful detailed and fun IEM for 50 bucks. Well, really 60 because you're going to want to buy a, a, a different cable. All right. Fantastic. Fantastic. I've compared to these the P1 and I know uh, another friend of mine that has the ZS10 and they actually had borrowed my P1s, sent them back and said, I don't, I don't need them with these. Okay. So the P1s are like 169, 170 bucks. I know it's close. Uh, they're about $170. These are 50. Okay. Pretty good. All right. I listen to most of these on the eStudio M100 Mark II. Why? Because it has 10 band parametric EQ. It's got a better DAC than my Android phone or anything like that. And it's a LDAC Bluetooth receiver. Okay. Neither one of these need a headphone amp, but I would say that you probably would want to run a external DAC on them. Unless you're running like the uh, the KZ, uh, not the, unless you're running the LG super duper awesome audio phone. Okay. All right. Let's talk about how the Sennheisers sound. Sennheiser was nice enough to send these out to me. They also sent uh, me the Momentum M3. And I liked, I liked the Momentum, Momentum 3, M3, I don't know, Momentum 3, I liked them, they're Bluetooth headphones, I like these too, $300 is, can be expensive, I'll say there's enough magic here that if you do have the budget and you like that sound, then these are worth it. The sound signature on these changes a bit from foam to silicon tips, as most most will. If you have foam, it calms down the bass a little bit, and you're going to want to calm down the bass, or at least personally, I wanted to calm down the bass a little bit. Because with silicone tips, I felt that the bass, really from 250 hertz down, really just needed to come down, you know, 3 dB or so. With the foam tips... I still felt like there was a little thickness at 250, and the reason why I know it's at 250 is because I brought it down 2 dB, and then everything sounded perfect. One of the things that these do is there is some top end magic with percussion instruments, snare drums, cymbals, things like that. The rim shots, the ta. Um, I've never heard it before on anything, headphones, uh, well, between headphones and IMs. I've never heard what's going on here. And for me, I have no problem EQing, uh, IEM. So for me, what I did is I just brought down the, the bass about 3 dB when I was listening through silicon tips. Now, when I put on foam tips, the only thing I needed to do was bring down 250 hertz about 2 db and then everything was fine these these do something that i haven't heard before and because of that i mean I, i'll recommend them uh, at 300 if they're more than 300 i don't think i don't know if i could recommend them because their styling is a little bit like it's not fancy and that doesn't bother me but for 300 dollars, people are generally probably going to expect something pretty fantastic because I think if you look at their lower tier IEMs, they're built, I think, pretty sim similarly. So for 300 bucks, you should be getting something different, right? Well, you are, I haven't heard the other ones. But from a sound perspective, completely worth it. The build quality, the their ear tips and things like that are about the best. And the way that they're designed, the way that they fit in the ear, pretty fantastic. I like these a lot. I wish they weren't quite as bassy as they are but i switched it to foam brought down 250 and 250 i didn't bring down much even with just switching to foam i think i could get away with with not eqing them at all but they're pretty awesome i noticed the majority of that magic was happening in like not really everything but i mean acoustic stuff 
I read an article on these that not an article, a review on these where they said they're V-shaped. I don't think they're V-shaped. I mean, I think there's a big bump on the base, but I don't feel like the mid-range are, you know, super scooped out or anything. And I don't feel like the highs are scooped out either or, or uh, elevated either. I just feel like the highs are, there's something going on there that makes it just fantastic. Um, so if you're in the market and you have $300 to spend, Let's say you travel a lot, you get on planes a lot, uh, you're in an apartment and you want something that's pretty spectacular, give the Sennheisers a try. I mean, the KZ ZS10 Pros are no brainer. At $50, you want a detailed head or detailed IEM. I mean, no brainer. 50 bucks. You get a different cord. You don't even need, need to get a different cord. Just get them and then save up for a cord or whatever. Uh, both will run off your phones. However, I would recommend getting something like the Ear Studio M100 Mark II uh, because of the DAC. It's got two Sabre chips in it, uh, parametric EQ, Bluetooth receiver. You can actually use it as a, a preamp. Uh, anyway, both great products. Okay, $300 sounds like a lot. Um, I recommend them. Okay. I'm not saying they're the best thing out there for everybody, but I think they have enough magic going on that they do justify their $300 price tag. Okay. So if you want to support the channel, there's a variety of ways to do it. Uh, any links in the description, I'll link both of these, um, are affiliate links and I will get a small commission if you click on it and purchase through that links. I also have a Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio, man. Every Sunday night we do patron only zooms and then we have private zoom sometimes sometimes we get together with a small group and have zooms we have a patron only facebook page where we get together and chit chat there's all sorts of stuff we we do all right you can also sign up for amazon music hd for free click on the link scroll down to the bottom click try hd you get three months for free i get a couple of dollars also if you want me to put together a diy speaker kit i'll do it contact me and we'll figure out all the details okay so don't binge watch hulu netflix or anything like that binge listen through your new iems and fill your soul with happiness and with that i'm randy i'm the cheap audio man